Blue Devils in their home whites. They are the number four team in the nation. Norm Stewart in his 31st year. If he can somehow win today, it'll be number 600 just at Mizzou. Tyrone Lee, his leading scorer, 15 a game, 10 against DePaul yesterday. That led the Tigers in that low-scoring game. Coach K, his 18th year, 407 wins at the helm of the Blue Devils. Steve Wojciechowski, a big day yesterday, really dishing things off. He had 11 points with 11 assists against the Silver Swords of Chaminade. He is the emotional leader of these guys out of Durham. And Duke has the opening tip. And Missouri, man to man. And we'll see it at both ends. Two's in the starting lineup. Which has the two guard alongside D.B. Ray. He can shoot some, and he took it down deep that time. Very confident player, outstanding. I think. Rebound. Well, it hasn't been a pretty start. Both teams struggle a little bit, knocking shots down. From the left wing, the three for John Woods. And that's not Duke defense. They didn't get back and identify. Nice space out there by Woods. Pretty kind of start Missouri needed. D.B. Ray penetration pulls up, drills it. And Wojo going full tilt backwards, couldn't get back to challenge. Brand flashes into the paint. The fadeaway, nice touch. And Hards, uh, non-existent defensively there. Just let him shape up. They started 0 for 7, now they're 1 for 8. Well, they want to run the ball with control. But you can see here, Langdon matches up with Wojo's guy. Wojo in, in transition defense heads now in terms of running the show. Monty Harge with his first point. He only had one against DePaul yesterday, and by the to us, though. No, not, not quite. McLeod for three, and, and the Dukies are back. And that was set up by Wojo's confidence, the pass that lets down. He is impressive. Bench presses 330, squats 550. This is all in John Saunders' league, incidentally. George Mazik described to me by Kim Anderson the other day as a small Monty Harge at 6'9", 285. I mean, that's the way we both look in our younger days. <laughs> I'm just afraid when he gets older. Kelly Fames, the rebound. And then he threw up involved in a lot of the uh, pep talk and the excitement as Mike just analyzes. George Mazik slipping away from Chris Burgess. As the you say, well, he bench presses squats 500 pounds are a big squeeze the pill yeah no, it's only a 10 out Tyrone Lee looking for penetration Chappelle leaning into him now that's the concern Mike had uh, the dribble penetration but right down here you, you are right this on you mother he really just goes right up to it never gives him much of a fake a jolt over the Tigers right now DB Ray for Mizzi got it up that time a lot Quick. quicker very decisive and he's got to get down the floor as Brandley won't go down for Woods. Wojciechowski gets the loose ball. Devils come out three on two. Wojo has to let it go. And the two Blue Devils will lead by nine. They had one point in the first 345. Then they blitz Missouri with 21 on the board after that. Missouri 22-13 after the first 10-minute quarter. Coach K recruiting you not on his shooting hand. Very difficult for the defender to get involved. Dave Decker hoping to replace Bill Raftery at the table. So Young guy. John right. Woods, five early points, sits down. Well, if he keeps working on his game, maybe he'll have another alternate career. He's got a nice touch on that rotation, doesn't he? He sure does. Quicker. He's just a good defense, and they're prepared for him. Hey, for a nice look for Tyrone Lee. Nice little back cut, little Princeton move. They said he's not getting all the minutes where he can make mistakes. Nice, nice penetration. Rolls at home. Nice little move. Speaking of, that'll help the... Maybe the best field ever here at the Maui Invitational with number four, Duke, number seven, Kentucky, and number one, Arizona. And how about... Hit of the Macy Day Parade. <laughs> and there's... Kelly Thames. Uh, yeah, well appreciated by Missouri, too. They got to get him involved a little bit. Nothing but glowing phrases for the spirit, the stick to of this young man. A lot of guys would have had their careers ended by that basketball. Guys... And to have that happen, never be able to show his total mm -hmm. ability. He's got to be tough on anybody. Better get some outside shooting going because they're really tough down low with numbers. Well, I thought the lineup earlier now, they're, but when Decker was on the floor with Woods and things, I thought they had some action outside. Kelly with six, all of them here in the second quarter. We've got the under three-minute timeout with 2.54 remaining. Great rebound by John Woods. Tyrone Lee 
see the tip hole. Well, they need the rebound as they're struggling with the shooting. Ooh, here's a freebie. Kelly Thames, Langdon trailing it. And send it in there, Kelly. All eight of his points in this quarter. And Mike wants the timeout. So they're hanging around. And they're not playing great offensive basketball. It went all the way down and came out. Well, the length of the pass, and you don't have enough heat on it. And a little zig and zag there in the open floor. And even here, you can see Kelly doesn't have that great foot speed acceleration that he once possessed. And Trajan's smart enough to realize, don't give him three, let him go. This paper to his left. He'll go up the middle and pull up. Smart. Smart. Everybody was going to address the step in. Uh, Mike's pointing out that got to make a move to the goal, try and get a, a nice back cut. Hey, oh. Fur! Oh, he couldn't finish! And the clock expires on what would have been a spectacular play for Missouri to end it. Mike Krzyzewski leads by nine at the half, 40-31. Norm Stewart's team coming back. John Saunders, the Tigers showing some signs of life. They're not going to go down without a fight in Maui. All right, guys, thanks a lot. That would have been huge if they hit that shot. You said Missouri wanted to keep the game in the 60s. Well, it's going to be in the 60s, but just for them it looks. Just for them. But I'll tell you another thing. you got to credit, finally, the seniors showed up for Missouri when you took a look at Thames and Lee, and they get their 14 points. Seven percent after hitting three of their first four. Devils shoot 45 after missing their first six shots of the game. A lot of blocks, a couple of them by Elton Brand. Turnover. <laughs> Things been banging people all game. Little touch. Grower gets the roll off the inbounds pass. That deuce. DB Ray knocks down the three. A nice play by Lee, though. DB at the end of the year, Missouri. Yeah, I do too. I like the young, know, the new people and the young. Uh, Not mind being an underdog. They almost beat. See how they break Good. you down there, Bob. Good playmaking guard by the name. My hair, by the way. I don't. Look so. at you. Uh, I was a candidate for the Kentucky Fried Chicken job. <laughs> Not the University of Kentucky. They know better. See you. Power off the inbounds play, and Tate Decker lays it home. A half dozen for Tate. Get the shot. Hafer for Thames. Nice speed. Good finish. Then that was well executed. You get the feeling even the Duke fans are waiting for the next game? Yeah. Every ounce. Hafer hanging and scoring. Jeff Hafer with his first field goal. Decker grabs the loose ball, and Tate banks it too hard. Kelly Thames gets it back. And that's one where you got to go up strong. It's a close game. See what they're made of. Well, tomorrow you'll get your wish. Kelly Thames with a nice touch for the right side. 15 for team. With that Australian tour in between seasons, that makes them look like a team that's already in top form. Mature. He had 23 yesterday, four rebounds to go with those points. Tyrone Lee, the pull-up, and a nice shot. 8-4, the senior, out of spring. They had to do their sets as frequently. Then we walk through inherent in his philosophy. You, know, you take advantage of a guy who gives you the ball. Brower hits them both. Six for the Phillies. Back does, into the uh, defenders. He doesn't see things. Nice transition. John Woods finishing. I think George on two. The shovel and the pull-up, John Woods. He's got a little spice in his game, too, Brian. Yeah, nice. But you'll see the polish come with these young guys. 82-59, Duke beats Missouri. At halftime, they led by nine. They blew it open in the second half. Coach K is 4-0 this year, and they're in the championship game. For Bill Raftery, Bob Carpenter, don't forget what we've got coming up next. There's your final, a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in... ...over the years. How about 93? Kiwan Garris... Free throws to win it in double OT. He missed them both. The Tigers prevailed in three overtimes. Two years ago, Julian Winkfield. Five seconds remaining in regulation. The block, but the Illini would win it in OT. The series goes way back, and Illinois has won 18 and lost nine, including winning the last two straight. The fighting Illini and the Tigers in same. He is swingman Albert White. 6-5, and a couple of years ago, for the Michigan Wolverines, he was pretty strong as a freshman, with averages of nine points and five rebounds a game. He gives Norm Stewart a lot of versatility on the floor tonight. Now, over the last couple... Had some problems with it that kept him out last year. He's made a full recovery, and after some early struggles, he is really playing well now. 
The Tigers of Norm Stewart, and this could be number 700 for Norm tonight. How about that if he could get that against Illinois? It's the final Missouri-Illinois contest for Kelly Thames, the senior out of Jennings High School here in St. Louis. He's battled through some knee problems over the years, and that's the GTE lineups for the Illini and the Missouri Tigers. He's trying to reach a plateau that only seven others... And the opening tap from Jared G. And Larry, it'll be interesting to watch Matt Heltman run this Illinois offense. Guys moving all over the place. E.B. Ray looking on top. Albert White, how will he do as a starter? How's that for a start? Bob, I love that guy his last year at Michigan. He was an outstanding player. In fact, I, Albert White, he played against Sam Houston State the other night, which was his first game in a Missouri uniform. This time he buries a three. He'll set these folks off in St. Louis here. And the crack play out there on the floor. Well, not many stick around that long anymore, do they? There's White. Albert high off the glass. Larry mentioned his outing against Sam Houston in 15 minutes of that game. He had four points. Will lead the kick back out. Albert White has been the Missouri offense. He's got a couple of threes, and that's eight on the night for the six. Just wondering how much longer White's going to be able to hang on with that ankle. Good steal by Lee. Tyrone! You know what I liked about that? He made sure he was going to get the basket. He wasn't going to try to make it a big, explosive jam player. Tyrone Lee is about as good as there is in this country. Watch him come up with a steal. Push it down the floor. Nobody around him. He knows he's got two. Up and easy. And off the bench. Kelly Thames. Strong into the paint. That's about as easy a pass to the post as I have seen Missouri. A good decision. That's the coach's son right there. Hey, for in traffic. He is really athletic. Nice catch, too. Hafer got the pass down the inside. Tyrone. 37 years as a head coach. 42 in the college ranks. Norm Stewart, stability over the years. We've relied on consistency and stability. And uh, there's some things that we haven't done. But, uh, again, the consistency has been there. But uh, And right now, we've got to get it back. We've had two good recruiting years now, back-to-back. And I think that you're going to see Missouri back in that top 10 or that top 20 in basketball. And I'll tell you one thing about Norm Stewart. He will be an unfulfilled head coach until the Tigers finally appear in a Final Four. They've never been able to get there. Bob, of all of those numbers, you look down through that list. This guy has such a strong body. 6'5", 238. Gives him a player, really, that can play a couple of positions. He can play by Duke in Kentucky. Came home and lost to Coppin State. That really made it tough when they had to go to Arkansas. And a very active freshman he is now for Lon Kruger. See, that's where Thames, Thames was very effective down in there. If they can get that ball to him and he gets it. Pace has slowed down in St. Louis. Kelly Thames looking sweet from around the paint. And right now it's Missouri by two. At Chukudebe. Monty Harge at 6'11", 335. How many blocks does he have this year? Two. And they both came in the same game against Western Carolina. Hey, one thing, he's got a great glare. <laughs> On the wing now for Grower. And the Harge again down inside. Nice pass. Nice look for Woods, but John was on the baseline when he received the pass. That was a good backdoor cut. But Larry, with Monty Harge down so low, they didn't have a whole lot of room to off the guy this big to make that kind of pass. He looks with a nice back cut right here. He just had to step on the end line. And, and now Illinois with a chance to take the playing time tonight. Ryan, a six-foot freshman out of Pattonville High School. And there's Dad Rich, former coach at St. Louis U. Good, solid basketball man right there. Son's a good, solid player, too. But he's a small school player. Trying to make the adjustment to Division I. Okay, down on the inside of that violation down in there. Gave Harge a chance to pick up a couple of free throws. Mark and he got them both. He's yeah. got a nice touch. Small. Ryan Johnson, 6'6", 208. There's Albert White. That is a three. He, or not a two. He was straddling the line. He's got 11. He had one fight. Watch this nice shot. He comes up over the top, gets it, and knocks it down. 
But here's what made that shot so remarkable are the obstacles he had to go over. Hellman and Grara go straight to the floor. That's him jumping over both of them. Then he catches it and lets the shot go. Ten a game last year, playing the two-guard spot alongside Keywon Garrett. Well, they just bounce off Mountie, don't they? That's his first field goal, and Monty Harge has four. Large Harge. And it's ripped out of there by Albert White. Dragging off the woods. Back to him, and again! Oh, a little give and go there. That Nicely was, done. That was give and go and give. Yes. First or second three-point field goal. Well, he's got both of them. Both of them, yeah. Thames, five seconds. Yes. Kelly rattles it home. And the clock will run out as they couldn't even get the ball in. They look awfully inept from the 10-minute mark down to about the 30-second mark, and then both teams went crazy offensively. It's 28-26, but some signs of life in the closing seconds here. Absolutely right, Bob. Staff only 27%. This is the story. Albert White, 11 points and 6 rebounds. The leading scorer and rebounder in that first half for both clubs getting it done on the baseline, but he can also back off and shoot that soft little J from beyond the arc. This is a guy that could lead them. He played 19 minutes in the first half. This is a guy that I think maybe. Jeff Afer playing with three fouls will start the second half for Missouri. Woods, short, and it rolls in for him. John Woods with five points on the night. He has a rebound and that because of fouls. He could be a real factor if he can get away from that fourth foul. And he makes it. Nice roll. Went right down the lane. I'll tell you what, the combination, I think, of Lee and... Penetration for Tyrone Lee. He flew by everybody. Wow, he does that really well. He can put the ball on the floor and get to the basket quickly. He's picking the ball up now. He's on the wing. Pushes it down inside. Once he gets into that pain area, no one's able to stop him. What a reason. Climbing the Missouri scoring list. Now he has third. Woods on the wing. White a mismatch against G, but he sealed him off. Can he finish? The second time he can. Well, he just doesn't give up, does he? Albert White stayed with that one. Struggling from the field. Really struggling. Brower for Parker. He was behind the arc. Well, he's not known for his three-point shooting, but that was a big one. Yeah, that is not in his scouting. Parker wants it. Blows by Heldman. The feed for Thames. Great look. Little across the lane pass. Nice work. Good interior. Illinois wants a 20. Missouri's 33, 37. To the game. Let's watch Albert White go to work here, pleasing those Missouri fans you just saw. Got G, sealed him off, went to the inside. Did he badly go to the other side, goes back up on the inside, and lays it in. Albert White was not to be denied. It's been their man with the double-double tonight. John Woods from the side. And if they can get some other guys to score, White ahead of him is Parker. A trailer fades upstairs. Not often you see two big guys work the lob. Nice pass by Parker. He got it up there just far or you better wait, Brian. White's not going to wait. Oh, man. Well, it's been Albert White tonight. It's been the offense for this Missouri team. He's been the guy that has carried the load. Another 20. His team's in trouble. But a long way to go. Bob, it's amazing what one player will do for everybody else on the floor. It's an inspiration to have a guy like this who comes into your program and the very first big night when he comes out and plays against one of their biggest rivals to have a night like this. It picks up the offense, it gets everybody more inspired, and they play better. Albert White doing the job tonight for those Tigers. Well, he knew for his 13th point. Tonight he's moved up to number 13 in the all-time. Been able to respond. Kelly Thames with 14. Missouri having a good second run. They lead by a dozen. Line I here. Two years ago, Larry and I sat here, watched a magnificent game.
Kiwan Garris looking to shoot. Five seconds left in regulation. Julian Wingfield with the block. And then it was Jerry Hester, then a junior, wearing number 40. And the Illini took care of it. He's too good of a shooter to get shut out. What a struggle by the backcourt of Illinois tonight. I mean, it really has been very, very tough for them. The combination all bench team player. Tyrone Lee back. Fouls have limited him tonight. He's back with four. On some dribble penetration. Switches to the right hand. It's a block. And could be three for Illinois. What a nice move by Johnson. Yeah, a little scuffle down underneath now. A little, little tension. Watch again. A nice move by Brian Johnson down the lane. Very all the way out on the floor to call his team away from that scuffle. Let me at least come to midcourt. Now they've both got their teams together. Tommy O'Neill saying, come on, let's get out here and play. Both of these clubs showing a little bit of stress right now. They had a little altercation earlier. Johnny Parker chipping in with five now, all in at seven tonight. Well, Missouri Club really shoots free throws well. Yeah, they were almost 76% last year. That was a school record. This year, they're at 72, the best in the Big 12. John Woods with nine. He's averaging 12. On that perimeter. Ooh, that was almost a bad pass. Good catch. Hester is red hot. Another ball. That's 12 for Jerry. Reflection. Hester. Johnson. Here come the fighting Illini back. They're doing it with the defense. Paper for Thames. He gets hooked. Can't score. Second chance. Well, I'll tell you one thing about this Missouri club. They really battle on the inside. They will not give up on a missed shot. Heldman. He couldn't catch it. Shoots the deuce. Doesn't matter now. He is red hot. Well, he started to pick up the finished series that has featured some thrilling overtime games in the 90s. Parker for three. Oh, that was big. That was big. Johnny Parker with eight off the bench. A freshman, local kid out of the What a second half it's been. Kelly Thames working hard, and the Tigers have forged a three-point lead. Lot to go. For the land of Lincoln. Do they have a little wager on this thing? By the way, uh... Norm Stewart wanted us to remind folks of something tonight. As Johnny Parker knocks one down, Norm said, you guys need to tell people that St. Louis is in Missouri. Some people forget that. <laughs> Parker with another Columbia, when they beat the Jayhawks, they did it with free throws. Mm -hmm. They did. Brian Grower is maybe just thinking about number 700 lurking there. Oh, look at the big tip by Kelly Thames. Now some more time can be wasted by Mizzou. Afer for Thames at the high post. Parker. They're looking to double him. Turner keeps it in, but he couldn't get back to the ball. Look at Grower wiggle away. Clock running down to a minute and a foul on Heldman. Good handling by Grower that time. He stayed with that ball on the sideline over there. Turner was trying to pull. That's the best thing about that play. <laughs> he just kept on moving. That's what a player's dad always does when he's a coach. He thinks about those kind of things. There, who's going to be a fine player for this Missouri team in his future. There was another Grower boy, Kevin, who played on one of Tubby Smith's Sweet 16. So his average is up in the high 70s now. Kelly's having a big night. If he hits one more, he's at 20. And that's what seniors are supposed to do. Missouri back on top by six, top by six, final 40 seconds. Hafer, got it! Big steal, a feed for one. Jeff Hafer. Like I said, you'll get your heroes from very unexpected places. Hafer with a big steal at midcourt. Missouri with two more attempts at the free throw line. He set a new Missouri freshman record for steals last year with 36. And guess whose record he broke? A kid named Anthony Peeler, who was the biggest of his career. Missouri now 20 out of 24 from the frillis. He's feeling better than he has in years. Norm will be 63 on January 20th. 
And Jeff Hafer, his fourth point. Threes can't beat Missouri. So the best Illinois can hope for now is a three, a steal, a three, and a Toronto is trying to get the crowd geared up, and they should applaud this man. 700 victories in his 37th season of coaching. Another courageous story on the floor tonight. How about Kelly Thames, the senior who missed an entire season because of the knee, a Jennings High School kid, Jennings... Tell you one thing, we don't want to ignore this Illinois club either. Gotten better and better. Week from tonight, these teams play a couple of tough games. Illinois is at UCLA. Missouri will play Maryland. Hafer gambling for another steal. Two points. Esther Short. The tip does count, and the Tigers win it. 75-69, Norm Stewart, number 700. For Larry Conley, I'm Bob Carpenter. Hope you enjoyed it from St. Louis tonight. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Albert White, a great night. Happy holidays. Sports Center is next. Game is number four on the countdown. From the get-go, there was just such intensity about it. It was all Norm. It was... Norm storming up and down, you know, the St. Louis players. You're supposed to be good. Why don't we go out and show somebody how good you are? Five seconds. Yes. Kelly rattles it all. There's Albert White. That is a three. Unbelievably special. Again, Kelly Thames, a St. Louis basketball player, uh, comes in, coming off some injuries. For Kelly Thames to come up big in that game, uh, Coach Stewart 700, will always be special. Last game as a senior playing in the Bragg Rice game, I made it clear that I want to go out a winner, and I just made sure that I try to at least do what I was supposed to in front of the St. Louis fans and, and being a hometown boy, want to come out with a win. And the Tigers win it 75 69. Norm Stewart, number 700. That meant a lot to me because I was one of the players on the team that he got that 700 victory. That's kind of special because he's one of a kind coach. Tonight here at the Hearn Center, packed house for this first big Monday game. Play the uh, the starting lineups for both clubs: Smith, Wagner, Manecki, Vasquez, and Mim for Texas. Ray Wampler, Hafer, Thames, and Monty Harge opening for. This is really some optimism on the part of Chico Vasquez. We mentioned Harge, six feet eleven, Fallon trying to get back in it, but that's really a big margin to have the opponents outscoring you by that many from the line. Hard scores and everybody can sit down. That's re It's really a serious rebuilding year. No question. Now, Chris Clack, they don't know how serious his injury had received word that Clack had an MRI completed today, but they don't have the final results of the test yet, so they really don't know. Axel ought to be back shortly. He's got a, an ankle injury. Who's not here tonight. He and them played high school ball together at Westlake there in Austin. Soft jumper, and he gets... The shooter's bounce and it comes back down. First two for Lee. Lee really doing a great job coming off the bench for the Missouri Tigers. From Albert White, the transfer from Michigan, just started playing. He's only had a four-game career here at Missouri after transferring in at mid-semester mid last year. And he is a guy who's just started to get it going. He's got an ankle injury over there in sort of a walking cast. They're really relying on him. Big and strong, can play the two guard and can play down on the inside as well. Seated next to him, Perryman now at six feet two playing down on the bottom. Johnny Parker with the jumper, rattles down the three. Each of these teams, Ron, is really a man-to-man -man team. Uh, both coaches could tell us when was exactly the last time they played zone. Hearts scores inside. It's not very often, but with the injuries, this is the defense Tom Penders. Here as quickly as that first shot, where <laughs> it's bounced off his hands and went in the bounce. Thames as we Maneki gets a breather. And Ira Clark, a 6'8 senior out of Colleen, comes into the ballgame. Thames gets the second one to go as well. Harge, although, is not one of the better ones. Monty gets that second one uh, to go down. Lee pulls up six feet away and swishes it. Definitely didn't uh, hold his ground. Harge, Clark against him, not much you can do. Haver gets it in the games. He has really shot the ball poorly from three-point range. 
Thames in the corner rattles it down. Thames now, of course, that was that wasn't even NBA. That was uh, out of space. Hey, but that ball went down and then came back out. That's going to be a technical foul for hanging on the rim. The basket, they're going to count the basket, but they are going to call a technical foul for hanging on the rim. And Norm Stewart. <laughs> Count the basket. Yes, they did count the basket. Cross court to Ray. He'll put up a three. That's a rainbow. And when it came down, court and floor. And Ray is not Ray only four three-point baskets made on the season and he actually gets knocked down before he buries it. Listen to almost a one-two-two two look. Dave Decker, finger roll, scores his first two. Decker with the fake gets Clark off, off his feet, and that is a nice now they're they're set in the zone is more a one-three-one, but they're they're trying to match up pretty well, and they didn't do it that time. That is a great job and a nice pass. Wagner gets Woods and Woods swishes it. Boy, John Woods and six points, two rebounds. 58% for Missouri shooting. And it's even higher as Lee cans the jumper. Well, Ron, Missouri is 35, and when you hit him, he just goes nowhere. You go the other way. So uh, the youngster is having a difficult time figuring that one out as Thames hits a three. And the Thames gets it and will take a break. 358 until halftime. 22 when he's in the game is number 23. That's a technical foul, but as we heard the official explain, as long as they change number 23, but I'm really number 22, I'm going in the game. He's got to wait for the next stoppage, and that's what they do. Nice job finding your blockout responsibilities fouled up. And so the opponent can do a pretty good job on the offensive boards if they're aggressive, and Missouri has been nothing. Free throws for Missouri. They are right at 88. Lead. Tration into the zone defense, draws the defense down into the middle. Lee has all day to load up and shoot the ball. And that's the way it's Trap pressure. Woods. Hey, well, he saves it when it's going well. It's going well. Lee well. with the three pointer and he rattles it down. <laughs> Heavens, you get a point where it's probably going to be a turnover, and all Hafer does is throw it up in the air. Look who's down there catching it. Monty Harge finding the open guy, and once again, Lee's got all day to shoot the ball. This is a 19-0 run in the last one. And let's keep in mind that they're not here with an ankle injury, so Texas without its two leading 14 points, five of seven from the field. <laughs> And there's Harge again. He's just catching it, stepping right to the basket. Texas. Wagner kicks it. Paper outlet pass. And here's Woods. Just before the horn. So it is halftime. Missouri 51 and Texas 26. Now let's send it to Chris Fowler and Digger with the courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. So he doesn't bend the thumb back. Hard in, score it, and fouled by Mim. Now, good, and he still has the strength to get the shot up and in. But the mistake that Mim makes is trying to block the ball right there because Hard is able to use his strength. If he waits till Hard shoots the ball, Texas hasn't hit a three tonight. Woods dishes it off. Lee, 16 points for him. Gray taking a look and, in fact, smiling but electing to pass up. Three. Lee, 19. Well, five points again. Mom, and it's her birthday tonight, so happy birthday to uh, to Rosie Woods down in McKinney, Texas. 60 to 39. Very close to what they scored in the entire first half, only 26. 
Well, they're playing with a much more intensity right at the moment. Lee. Well, he was the killer in the first half. 22. And really goes after him. Now, here, there's Lee with all day to shoot it. And that is a long three-point shot. That's it. Texas has stayed in the zone. Hayford. A nice job showing some patience on the offensive end. Hafer with just enough strength to get the heart right out of any comeback effort. Mim goes to the bench. He gets a breather. Wagner with a foul, his third. 17 fouls against the Longhorn. Has gone through a couple of tough injuries. Oh, that knee injury yeah. he had early in his career, really a tough. <laughs> As if for programming, I think. What? He even had the time right. Tom Pender's now trying another combination. Here's Hafer. And that is indicative of the type of foul, his second. Ninth team foul against the Horns. Well, that's not a bad stroke. Hafer, not flashy, but he just, he has that attitude, and he gets other people to come along and join him. The Stames gets them both, 10 of 10. There's a good look at it. And it's stolen by Thames. Showtime. They just don't see Kelly Thames. He hides in the middle of the court, gets the easy one. Harge gets a standing ovation from the local. He had 13 points quite the kinds of looks they got at the basket in the first half. Well, they've got 32 points in the second half. They only had 26 in the first half. Becker misses the dunk, and then it goes down. I beg your pardon. Went off the rim and came straight. Uh, not exactly picture-perfect dunks in here, but that ball was knocked out of his hands, and it did go in the bathroom. One of the things that if you're the Missouri Tide, check you though, that wand, it'll actually turn off his defibrillator. Lee suspending. Oh, boy. I'll tell you, whatever he's put up tonight, that's 24 and a chance for 25. Have some room to maneuver here, and every time Texas has started to make a little run, they have been able to get a three-point basket from behind the line or the old-fashioned way, and Norm is very pleased with that particular. His lead doubling please, 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 his season please, please. average in this game tonight. A lot of folks did that. Hard included. Things snuck underneath. Now Maneki tried to sneak up. Still 20 left on the shot clock. James Golton, he called him Maneki. Missouri, 86 to 63. Ira Clark preparing to check back in for the Longhorns as Lee for six from the field. He uh, had 26 against Oral Roberts, and now that's a new career high. Also with practice. And now they're chanting, we want Wampler. And they're now Hafers in double figures. He's got 11. So this one goes in the books as a Missouri win, 91 to 69. 27 points for Lee, 21 for Thames, 13 for Monty Harge. Coming up next is Sports Center. Ron Franklin for Dan Bonner saying so long from Columbia, Missouri, and the Hearn Center as Missouri wins it in impressive fashion tonight, 91 to 69. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Very, uh, a border war that is of note as uh, Kansas travels east and comes into the state of Missouri at a packed house as you might imagine because here at the Hearn Center since they have opened this building Dan Bonner it's uh, it's a margin of 15 victories by the Missouri Tigers interestingly Missouri with an opportunity to run Kelly Thames taking the ball hard to the basket Pierce body had pretty good position but he was called for the blocking violation as we said that's his second foul so He's not happy about it. Well, as you mentioned, he's got the six early points of the uh, 13 scored by K. Robertson, Gregory, Earl, Bradford, and Pugh. Those are the five on the floor now for KU. Lee Grower, Thames, Woods, and Decker, the five on the floor. For On Thames with the jumper, too hard off the back iron.
And Baines will score it and give the assist to Brown. Brown ought to get a couple assists for that one. Him around the leg. Wide a 68% three-point. Around the legs, but it's too late, Ron. He's already through the hole and he's got the yard. Gets it, so the 57 first trying to let him play. He said Jacques was tough last year, but nothing compared to what Rafe has been like. <laughs> White for three, switches it. I told you, he shoots the three better than he does the three. He's got five. All of a sudden, the turnover by Ray, and we got a one-point ball game. Here's the turnover. Tate Decker got the slap away and White with the dunk. White turns on this crowd. Too long in a game like this before he knows it. That's for sure. Thames works again. Lester Earl puts it up strong and scores. Wow. It's a great pass by Robertson, but Thames gets over there. That's a move where you may argue whether that's a charge or a block or whatever, Ron, but if you get two fouls, you can't take the risk if you're Paul Pierce. You're right. I think what Roy is claiming on his second foul, then Thames was on that one, and he got both of them. Three-pointer on the way. Count it. Now Parker gets into the fray. That he turns one way and then the other, and then he just swats down at the ball. There's no way that an official cannot... Robertson for three, and that oh, may my. silence some of these boos every time he touches the ball now. He all of a sudden points. Boy, has he ever contributed early. Three and a long one. And Billy Thomas, nothing but just the court and then the floor. Wow. Ron, and you think about what Kansas... And they're still ahead of the game by 10. Hafer with his first two points of the three. Got it cocked. Thought better of it. Grower for three. That yeah. was an NBA three. Well, he ought to get a four. That lob pass well off the mark there. White will pull up. He'll bury the jumper. First two points for him. 11 and four. But the rebounding is what has uh, kept KD well in front of this one. Ron, sometimes if you play at the overs, they've turned the ball over while they're trying to force the tempo. Kelly Thames with his eighth point. White with the turnaround. White now has nine. White gets it to Thames. Kelly is now with double figures. Thames with ten. Paper. there. Robertson with the rebound gets the shot away and that is wow. That, <laughs> that thing almost went in. We are at <laughs> halftime. With our score Kansas 41 and Missouri 36. Now let's send it to Carl Ravitch and Digger Phelps with the court. Missouri in the man to man. Looks like they're trying to get Lester Earl involved and Robertson buries another one. And that's where Kansas has been most effective. Really not able to produce very much. Chenoweth, though, with eight rebounds in the first half as the finger roll by Grower. And good heavens. Albert White. 11 points for him. And here comes Pierce. You know, Ron, Pierce lost it out of bounds. Shot clock about to go under 10. Let's see if White tries to take Pierce. White scores it. Robertson tried to draw the charge, but Pierce in the second half. White. First tie in the game since it was 0 0. He's doing a super job. We said he needed to have a big offensive game, and he certainly come out hot in the second half. This man to man here in the second half. First points for Monty Hard. The border war continues. Here, Hard just holds him off, pushes him away, powers it to the basket. Wow. Ball game. Tied at 46. Paper nice dishes pass. for White. Nice job drawing the defense, faking the pass. 
or faking the shot, and then he gets it right back. That's a great play from Hayes. KU number one. They were 22-0. They lost in double overtime. The year before, KU ranked number three. They're upset. Three years ago, Kansas won at 102-98. Or lost. Yeah, Missouri lost it. And uh, then four years ago. They're back to the zone. White. There's an answer for the zone. 20 points for Albert White. The good when he came out there and caused Gregory to turn back into the defense. Two as we go to the break. 11.56 left. Nice job. Two-point lead by the Jayhawks. Lee scores and a chance for a three-point opportunity. Going to do that. It'll be next weekend. They don't want to take that chance. Ron, you can really see how Kansas misses LaFrentz. LaFrentz... Hey, for head to three, thought better of it. Harge against Chenoweth. With so much power, got it up there anyway. McGrath all the way to the other end, not there. Robertson misses, and Harge on the rebound. Offensive foul. Needless to say, Norm isn't happy about that, and Tom O'Neill is not happy about something over at the scorer's table. Ron, Norm is... Norm's out of the coach's box, and I think that's why they called the technical. He called the technical foul, I think, because Norm was out of the coach's box. What Norm is saying, one of his players was injured and was holding his arm. And then Gentleman back out to Robertson. Robertson pulls up from eight too hard off the front iron. And Albert White will come away with it. If you're out of the box, it's a tee. The coach, if he's going to leave the box to go see to his injured player, he's got to be beckoned by the referee. Five points. Missouri lead. Just over seven to play. To the man-to-man. -man. Decker. First two points for him, and the foul's on Pew. Great job moving without the basketball to get position. As this pass goes in, you see no help back there. And because there's no help, Decker has time to wheel to the... Well, they just flashed on the board, and we're going to have to... <laughs> I didn't think Robertson was anywhere in the neighborhood. And you look at Grower. Bradford tries to recover the ball by dribbling it. You never try to recover by dribbling it. You pick it up and wait till the traffic clears. Big air on ESPN. Three, it goes, got it, White. White now with 23, that's a career high for him. Bradford. Oh. Hugh, I think it was partially blocked by Harge. Harge did block it, he blocked it without. Does a nice job against the press run, he gets the ball to the right guy, then steps in position for the three and he's all alone. Stepped into the open spot, buried it. Career high, tight, but he's got 15 points in the game. They flash him into the middle. He rattles home the jumper from 15 feet. As I say, you better find him because can <laughs> Nice, nice give and go at Thane. They cleared out the area. This has gotten their attention, Ron. What do you think? Man to man. He oh, my goodness. Hit the shot and an opportunity to tie this basketball game. Wow. We are tied at two minutes and 34 seconds left in the ball game. And Pierce by himself, really. Thames back to Lee for three points. Oh, big basket. He's got six. 
but certainly the biggest hoop of this ball game for him. Billy Thomas. <laughs> 16 points for Billy. Wow. Hot. White leaves with 23 points. Concern's got to be that Paul Pierce has simply put the Jayhawks on his back and he's carrying him down the stretch. Pierce scores it and puts him in front by up to the ball fake. Well, he came close to the five count, didn't he? Hafer. Stumbled a moment. Billy Thomas kind of gave up on it. Hit on the wrist. Missed it. One point ball game. 73 72. Under a minute to play. With the number three team of the nation fall, the Tigers are in position. 23, now 22 on the shot clock. Lee can't get it, and Chenoweth gets the rebound and quickly back to Robertson. Shot clock is off. And Chenoweth is fouled. It's Brower. So it's a one-point game. 24.2 seconds left. Have to block out if you're Missouri. He missed them both. Kafer recovers it, and the Tigers, with an opportunity to win on this possession, are going front. Robertson with a holding foul with 11.4 seconds. That was an extremely dangerous pass. He's in trouble here. He throws up Lee. Watch Lee just go get the ball. Really bailed his teammate out right there. In the last four minutes of their games, this year, but he has to go in a critical time. 79% free throw shooter overall for the season. We're tied at 73. Now, of course, on, in the Kansas bench, they had an opportunity to set up what they wanted to, to do. Expect them to get down the court. Got them both. Norm Stewart calls a timeout. Under 10 seconds to play and a timeout called by Kansas. Seven and a half seconds as Robertson got it across. Block out. Right here in front of us, Paul Pierce will pull the trigger. Pierce is the man. Gets hit, runs into hard, and Missouri wins it. about Paul Pierce and he's going to get the basketball but as he comes around he gets open on the screen he comes around he's going to run into Harge he loses the ball Chenoweth goes to the basket they don't see it watch Chenoweth he's open under the basket but Pierce doesn't see him the ball is stripped away by Woods and Missouri wins So the Missouri Tigers go to 10 and 7. They are 3 and 3 in conference play, but most importantly, they have won four of the last five here at the Hearn Center against the Kansas KU 73. Coming up next, Sports Center. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. Try to make it 150 and extend their home court winning streak this afternoon as we take a look at the lineup. For the Tigers, Kelly Thames, the forward, then Monty Hart. Friends up there for the tip along with Monty Harge, and we're ready to go at the Fieldhouse.
Hawks win it. Paul Pierce loses control, and right away we have our first with the early 2 0 lead. Now it's Monty Harge out to Thames, and he drills it. That's a two pointer. That's John Woods, guarded by Thomas. Jayhawks up 4 to 2. Harge, nice pass to Hafer. Jeff Hafer with the bucket. We don't see for Monty Harge going up. Now to Pierce. Well, the Pierce with his first two of the afternoon, and now we've got a blocking foul against Kansas. And the shot does go line, a 78% foul shooter. And he completes the three-point play. Missouri now leads 7-6. to six. Left Earl got a good block. At, uh, he got awfully high in the air, but they called it with the body. That's from Kansas. Kelly Thames comes down with it. Looked like Decker knocked it out of Braves' hands. Another nice pass inside to Hafer. Jeff Hafer really hold the ball strong. There's the pass to Hafer. He gets the layup. Former KU players growing up in Topeka like he did. Oh, nice, off, nice offense by Missouri. That time just threw it over the players to score. They're combined five for eight for Missouri. Tyrone Lee hits the three-pointer. That's a big shot. Oh, big shot for Missouri. That knocks it in the press row out with his face. Oh, Missouri takes advantage of that one, and Kelly Thames finishes. Well, that's just not being awake by Ken. Now the outside shooter like that. Now he goes to the line with for three free throws. Tyrone Lee is a 77%. That proved to be the winning margin in that game. Well, hopefully it won't come down to free throws here today. Tigers down by 11. Monty Harge. Crowd wanted a foul. Put back is there from Tyrone Lee. Oh, there's no give up in Missouri. I think you see the offensive movement by Missouri. Harge going inside. He'll miss the shot, but Lee's there for the tap in. Once I uh, wanted to shoot it, but he hesitated. Now Woods. John Woods hits. That's a two-pointer. Brower hits the first. Paul and Rafe and let them go to work. Kelly Thames is now in double set as a group this season. Thames hits them both. Only three seconds left on the clock. D.B. Ray doesn't get the shot to go down, and the Jayhawks will head to halftime with a 15-point lead. 41 to 20. Price, the best serve, but he's yet to score this afternoon. Finally does there, makes the second free throw, and Kansas now leads the ball for the Tigers as they trail by 18. Monty Harge double team, now Grower three-pointer. Yes! Nice shot by Grower. Ball went inside. Again, Woods in the paint. Missouri bringing it right back at Kansas. Great 20-second timeout. And Robertson, kind of a bad shot, trying to go over Harge. All the way down is Thames. Tigers starting to come back, trailing by 11. And Coach Roy takes a 20-second timeout to talk it over. Watch Grauer move. He moves to the open spot. Spots up for the open three-pointer. Good two-man basketball by Missouri. Here you see Harge on the other end, getting the rebound, kicking it out to Kelly Thames. Kelly knows how to finish it off. Gets the land. Kelly Thames leads Missouri with 13 points. He is good to race. Working on the baseline. Down there with Thames and Harge, and they tie it up. Possession arrow back to the Tigers. That time, Missouri came down and doubled Ray. When Tigers down by 13, 47-34. John Woods three-pointer. Yes. Well, Kansas went to the point zone defense, and, and nobody for Kansas got out deep. Running the offense for Missouri. Now Hafer finding John Woods. And the lead is down to eight. A well, pretty simple uh, two-man game. On Harge, Harge blocks it away. Once again, we're seeing Kansas' inability to score other than Paul Pierce and, and Ray. Three-pointer from Brian Grower. The lead now is down to five, 47-32. Of bounds to Missouri. Have the lead down to five. Well, nothing going very good for uh, Kansas right now. Harge just holding his ground. He gets the block on TJ Pugh's shot. 
Now it's talking about the losses. <laughs> well, it just makes it more impressive that you guys won the title. <laughs> I don't remember any of those games. Inside to Harge. And now wide open, John Woods. Three-pointer. Well, Woods really lighting it up. Uh, he's hit a couple now. of 14 from the field. Money Harge, nothing but net on that one. Had one of his more memorable games this afternoon. Don't see that many air balls on free throws. 60 to 48, nine minutes and 20 seconds to play. Three-pointer goes from John Woods. Uh, Woods again knocks down the three. Started by Robertson. Grabber to the baseline. Oh, nice pass to Thames and the foul. Well, great dribble penetration by Grower. Knows where Thames is on the floor. Kelly Thames just poked. 15 points. And that is the second foul against Lester Earl. 1994. That is truly amazing. Almost four years have passed since the Jayhawks. Being 46% from the three-point line. Really, and they've also cut down on their turnovers here in the second half. John Woods, nice pass to Hafer. Jeff Hafer puts it away. Well, pretty simple to come out and guard him. John Woods inside to Harge. Well, Harge he's... has been fantastic here in the second half. Taking a right act right here in the second half. Watch him go to work on Rafe inside. Rafe unable to get around him defensively. He turns around. He's got the uh, Lester Earl. Lucky he didn't get hurt. Uh, lost his feet. Monty Harge is six foot a lead down to six. He does this just that, and now it's 66 to 60. Bayhawks by six. Now Woods long three-pointer. Oh, he's been hot in the second half. I tell you, Woods has gone nuts today. He's got 18 points. All four of his three-pointers have gone down. 23 in the first meeting, and he's on the bench with an ankle, with an ankle injury. Yeah, I mean, he's a big loss for Missouri, and uh, they had him early in the game. Uh, Missouri may not be team. Rex Walter is a big part of that team. Adonis Jordan, who's not here. Richard Scott. Well, Monty Harge, just a 55 for crowd. One and a double dribble there. Woods to Grower now. Grower's got a three-point opportunity. Hits it. Jeez. Big shot from Grower. Cuts the lead down to eight. Well, Missouri co continues to uh, shoot the ball well. It's unbelievable that Kansas has won uh, at K-State 14 years in a row. That game will be next Saturday, 3 o'clock. It's been a long time since they've lost there, and the Jayhawks have never lost at Bramlage, and now they've won 58 straight here at Allen Fieldhouse. 80 to 70 is the final. And the perfect ending to Legends Weekend here in Lawrence. For Mike Maddox, this is Chris Roden saying good afternoon from Allen Fieldhouse. Into uh, Stillwater and win a ball game. That uh, that is a that is a place that is uh, interesting. Play, and yet we've won ball games there. But like now you talk about the losing streak. We lost the ball game there when when uh, Alexander uh, he, he dribbles down the left side, throws the ball in. We got a man all over him. Throws the ball in a left-handed hook off the glass, and he never saw it. But went in the basket, and that beat us. And a big country beat us or tied us with a half-court shot. So, uh, you know, that's basketball. That's the way it goes. Missouri is just one of those places where the fans are so rabid uh, and behind the Tigers, and the Tigers play 20 points better at home than they do on the road. That's one of the biggest home court places in the country. I think they've knocked off four top 25 teams at home this year and have not won a road game. The Missouri Tigers and the Cyclones of Iowa State. Texas and Texas Tech really got this place going with a scintillating game. Finally, the Longhorns pull that one out. And earlier today, you saw Baylor win narrowly. And Marcus Pfizer has been terrific and has been average against Missouri. And it all depends on Monty Hart. When Monty Hart is not in the game, Marcus Pfizer was awesome. 27. Longs of Iowa State. We've talked about Pfizer. Stevie Johnson, Clay Edwards, Jerry Curry. He's the three-point shooter. And Lee Love, the point guard. As far as Missouri is concerned, they're starting line. Up, brought to you by Southwestern Belt. Monty Harge, the giant in the middle. Ty Tyrone Lee. Tyrone Lee confused all the time, but it's Tyrone Lee. He is up there along with John Woods, D.B. Ray, and of course Kelly. The Cyclones hit some shots from the perimeter. So far they've done both of those things. We'll see. D.B. Ray.
Woods, he's been shooting better lately. Harge again with Pfizer behind him. A lot of contact, no call. Son. Tim Floyd cannot believe it. Son, Monty Harge just put, a, put an elbow right square in the face of D.B. Ray earlier off of a nice screen that you see Tyrone Lee coming over and setting a good screen, really just getting in the way. With confidence, you know, when he catches the ball and shoots it like he really wants the shot as opposed to just feeling like he has to take it. Harge again. Harge, who injured his knee against Oklahoma, I'm an MVP. Harge has been used all season long, and in this game, he is off to a quick start. And the people behind the Missouri bench of Hafer. Lee gives it up to Thames. Thames with a nice move off the glass. Great body control by Ke Thames. He nails a three. Thames. Oh, is he hot? Oh, man. Look out, Kelly Thames. Three for three from the field. Three times that year and winning the national championship. White with a nice turnaround. Missouri just can't miss right now. I mean, the top three pointers this season that he's made the last three put together just buries it. All the here he is penetrating. And after this basket, Kelly Thames came down, puffed his fist, going, yeah! I mean, he <laughs> is feeling it. Well, they all are. He's three for th Here comes Johnson the other way. Oh! oh he missed the layup. Oh, goodness. What a great... Just showed a beautiful drop-off pass to John Woods running baseline. With the uh, resurgence of your basketball program. Woods nails both free throws. And Missouri continues to pull hands of Monty Hawks. Fight through the screen. Now watch this. This is called belly up defense. Just put your arms up in the air. Move your feet. And you don't have to do anything spectacular. Just stay in between your man as you can around that screen. And curl right back to the basket. Jimmy Ray checking back in for the Tigers. Or Grower who is fashioning playing out of bounds. Lee got it. That's his first bucket of the night. Nice look off by Tyrone Lee. Guy surely looks like he's jumping up against a brick wall. Look at him. He turns around and Hart just got that arm straight up in the air. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. Just... See, I like that. I mean, Missouri broke the full court press. Immediately they turn around and they've got a three on two. They're getting ready to blow on that whistle. <laughs> White, he's been hampered pretty much all season long. As a player, you're not going to get away with that. Hard not to do that, though, isn't it? I mean, your natural instinct. Ray will try another three. Oh! You talk about a rainbow! Boy, I'm telling you, that jump shot. Look how far he's backing up. He's backing up, backing up, and then really doesn't close out on him at all. But he had his normal average seven points, Johnson. White falling away, can't get it to go, but there's Lee to tip it home. Put the ball down there, and two or three people ran down there and doubled up, tripled up on him. Ray with his third three-pointer of the game. Wow. D.B. Ray is absolutely his career high. He set against Iowa State as a junior. His season high, seven points Great in pass. Nebraska. And Thames makes him pay at the other end. What terrific ball movement by the Tigers. Lee to one it, and again, Iowa State just daring him to take that jump shot. The, here's that great passing. I mean, boy, you get this kind of passing down there on the end of a break, a scoring opportunity, and you're awful tough to beat. Nothing in the world gets the ball up the floor quicker than passing. And that was a little wide. Now Johnson oh. has it blocked by Hart. Yeah. Knocks it out of bounds. I mean, son, that's his second block flat-footed. The Intimidator, Monty Hart. Hart, a large roll in the middle for the Tigers to lead them to a 15-point lead. And we're back after this from your friend at Phillips 60. White. Well, every now and then, even with the ankle injury, you can see those flashes of brilliance. Uh, you know, Albert White is unquestionably Missouri's best academic all Big 12 first team. 3.78 in mechanical engineering. Johnny Parker is hit. And in the ball and took it back for a minute. Oh, and that really faked out Iowa State. Cost him a basket as Woods came out of the woods. 
into the clearing for the basket at the end of the first half. Iowa State did make a mini run, though, to get somewhat back in 41-29, Mizzou with the lead. Anchor Groves lit the lamp for the Tigers, and they lead it by a dozen. 67%. Yeah, 63 from behind the three-point line and perfect from the free throw line. You cannot shoot the ball much better than Missouri did in the first half. Iowa State. Shirley with a nice move inside, can't get it, and there's Harge with a rebound. Oh, and there's that finger roll again. And a Tim Floyd, oh, he's going to get thrown out. Tim Floyd coming out on the course, and he is having some serious words with one of the officials, Paul Castor. I cannot believe he has not been thrown out of the game. That is unbelievable that he can walk all the way across the court and not get tossed from this game. Here's the play that got him so mad. After this free throw by Kelly Thames, what happened is Paul Shirley did a little finger roll. You know, we saw Paul do that in the first half. Instead of going strong and dunking the ball, he goes in and does a little finger roll. He felt like that was a block down there by Monty Harge. And Tim Boyd just went ballistic. Remember Harge in the earlier meeting in Ames, Iowa. Harge tossed from that game after he picked up his fifth and final foul with a technical. Remember, Here's the technical for Tim Floyd. You remember last year we saw Tim Floyd do this at Colorado? Mm -hmm. I have never seen a coach walk out on the floor and not get tossed. I've never seen that. And he's still having words with Ron Zetcher as Floyd. Harge finds a wide open Ray who gives it up to Thames for three. Thames rings the bell, and Missouri up 46-29. Kelly Thames is... Watch the Kelly Thames three-pointer. Look at Kelly spotting up like a shooting guard out there. That's six-foot-eight-inch Kelly Thames, who's played a lot of center. But for a second there, as Woods tries a three, it won't go. But there's Haper with a tip. Up for a second when Floyd was... Well, Monty Hart just got frustrated with Marcus Pfizer pushing on him and watching. He just shoves him in the face. And I don't think he shoved him that hard, but still, you know, you just can't do that. The ref's always going to catch the second goal. Look at the beautiful spin move. Marcus Pfizer did a great job not stepping out of bounds down there on the baseline. And on that play, Norm Stewart just did in that St. Louis score. Hafer can't get it to go. And all of a sudden, the Tigers are cold. Count that one, though, for Thames, and he's fouled by Shirley. When you're in a situation like that and you're Paul Shirley, it's almost unforgivable to commit the foul and still let the ball get up on the backboard. Look, he's completely behind him. If you're going to block it or you're going to go ahead and do it, you've got to prevent that ball from going in the hole. I mean, you go ahead, and I'm not talking about hurting him, but I'm talking about you've got to hit him hard enough to where he can't put that ball up over the rim. Thames completes the three-point play, but Missouri, even though they've exchanged nine points on three three-pointers, Parker's too strong, but there's Lee. Tyron Lee's down there, and there's a foul. Thames up over Clay Edwards. So when you talk about great players in this league, Kelly Thames' name has to be mentioned. And right now he's smiling because his Tigers are leading by 15. White with a power move. He, he is just so versatile. I mean, that was a beautiful, close to making an outstanding defensive play. Anytime you can get your post players passing to each other, you're going to be tough to stop. Maybe peaked at just the right time this season. But, you know, we've talked so much about their struggles on the road. The last two... That contest for Kelly Thames and the Tigers. The Cyclones from three-point range here tonight. Oh, good pass. Hey! Slams it home. Boy, has he got some hops. He has got some serious, serious hops. You know, that was a spectacular dunk. And let me tell you, it was so terrific. It was our Pizza Hut delivery of the game. Well, look, it's at the end of the play. And Hafer, he made that cut, and he wanted the ball to hold it. Did you see him turning and looking and calling for the ball? Compare that to Jerry Curry when we saw him make a cut and just step out of bounds. I mean, Jeff Hafer wanted that ball. You're right. What a terrific play. Yeah, I'd hug him, too. And Hafer completes the three-point play. 
And the Tiger fans now up on their feet and for Norm Stewart. And if they win here tonight, it would be their 17th win of the year. Well, Norm was asked about it earlier today, and he said, hey, look, we've qualified on a lot of fronts. Our RPI rating is in the 40s. Streak of schedule, we're right around 15th toughest in the schedule. He said, you know, in this tourney, we can come in and win one or two games and show people we're for real. I'm telling you that if Missouri had won just two games on the road, you know, maybe just one, they'd be a lock right now. The Wildcats, 111 to 56. Just your basic 55-point turnaround, 85-point <laughs> turnaround. Yeah, lost by this one right now, it looks like Missouri. White, oh. coast to coast. Beautiful left hand. Even hard, just Take a look at Albert White going coast to coast. Now watch the beautiful jump. This is 6'5", 200 and about 50 pounds. And look at the agility. Beautiful crossover dribble. Puts that ball over there in the left hand and just kisses it off the glasses. And there it is. DB Ray took that one away. Now here comes Hafer. Tips it to himself. Oh, wow. What a great play by Jeff Hafer. Is that an opinion? He always looks relaxed at this tournament. You know, he came over to us at practice yesterday and was so funny. He said, you know, I'm feeling kind of dicky, Tom Penders. Sutton over 600 wins in his career. And Lee may be putting on the finishing touches. Brought to you by Phillips 66. A hay for assist and basket. Assist and a bucket. Yeah. What a heads up play. I mean, just poke the ball up and then go run it down. I have points, but our choice is D.B. Ray. Yeah, I really like that pick. D.B. just played such a great game. Here's a good play playing defense, and he did so yeah. many things, not only running the offense, helping on the weak side. Of course. Yeah, absolutely. Johnny Parker. State. Norm Stewart saying, well, Tim, you're going to come back rejuvenated next year with a lot more talent. And Tim Floyd congratulating Coach Stewart on yet another win for him, number 711 in his illustrious career. So Missouri wins it 74 to 55.